has fast become an LGBT issue. Um, in all fairness to the LGBT um, um, cause, do you not feel that they are right in asking for equality to be taught to four-year-olds? No. I think the Equality Act has nine protected characteristics. They include aspects such as age and disability, which four and five-year-old children fully comprehend. But it also has some highly sensitive aspects, such as uh, sexual orientation and gender assignment. And that is why the ministerial guidance that goes with the Equality Act says quite clearly that when some of the more sensitive uh, protected characteristics are imparted to children. Schools can do it on an age-appropriate basis and they should do it taking into account the sensitivities of the communities in which um, the schools exist. Many that have questioned the LGBT um, issue, they have been told that they are anti-British and it's not conducive with British values. What do you have to say to that? Which L LGBT? Well, look, the fact of the matter is the LGBT community is part of our um, society and um, members of my family are members of the LGBT community. That's got nothing to do with it. The issue is, do you take four, five-year-old children and start asking them to examine their own sexuality? Now, a lot of parents, whether they be Muslim, Christian, Hindu, Sikh, Jewish would be concerned about that and I don't think it's at all unreasonable for I don't think it's at all unreasonable for age appropriateness to be taken into account. The final question is there are many parents that are concerned that this will become compulsory next year and um, how then do they go ahead with this? Well, that's, uh, that is uh, relationship education, which comes in in September 2020. I voted for that. And some schools have chosen, as they are allowed to, to introduce it from September 2019. But when I had the debate in the House of Commons about the Equality Act, I did say to the Minister, Look, unless you get this right with the Equality Act, when an even more sensitive issue comes in over the question of sexual education, you are going to have big problems. So you need to get it right over the Equality Act. And the fact of the matter is in Birmingham, all but two schools have got it right, and I commend them for it. They've done it the right way. But two schools have taken a particular stance, one in my constituency, and that has uh, caused the furor that's arisen. How do you feel about this costing you your Labour seat? Sorry, say that. How do you feel about um, the Labour Party taking such, such a position on this and not backing you up on this? Well, I regret it because I've served the Labour Party faithfully for nearly 50 years as a Member of Parliament as a councillor. But at the end of the day, my constituents come first. They always have done. I looked at the issue. Now, parents don't go and protest outside their own child's school unless there's some reason for it. Usually, they're very deferential towards their own children's school. And when they started protesting, I went and listened to what the parents said. And the parents said, look, we're not opposed to the Equality Act. The Equality Act actually protects them and their religion. So why is it that Birmingham City Council has won its um, court order in, in court? Well, that is a separate issue. Um, I'm talking about my dealings with the school. And the fact of the matter is, I looked at the issue from the point of view of the parents. I went and talked to the head teacher, and I said to her very clearly, look, bear in mind that 99.9% .9 of the children at this school are from the Muslim community. Bear in mind that the school exists in an area which is overwhelmingly Muslim. Doesn't it make sense if you did what all these other schools are doing, and introduce the highly sensitive aspects of the, of the nine protected characteristics on an age-appropriate basis. And her answer to me was, she was sitting opposite me, she got up from the table, walked round, closed the door behind me so her assistant couldn't hear what was being said, came back and said, well, actually, Mr. Godsiff, I quite agree with much of what you're saying, 
But, but she said, if I was to do what you're saying, the LGBT community would have something to say about it. And to be perfectly honest, I couldn't answer that. And I did reflect afterwards, the, my meeting with her finished quite soon afterwards, I did reflect what right has any group in our society to dictate or have a veto over how the law of the land is taught. What uh, would you uh, do consider to be the uh, key priorities within education? The key priorities, priorities about within, education. within education? Well, the, the, key pri the key priorities within education are to ensure that uh, a child who goes to school is in a class that is not oversized, uh, that there are enough teachers in the school to be able to teach that child um, the basic learning which all children need. Um, and I make it quite plain that when you're talking about exam subjects, I'll always take the side of the teachers. Um, at the end of the day, they're the experts, and I will always support them. But when it comes to a non-exam subject, like the Equality Act, there has to be a partnership between parents and teachers, because parents have the prime responsibility for bringing up their children. And therefore, unless there's a proper partnership between the two, you are going to have the same situation that arose at the school in my constituency. It should never have arisen. If the, if the head teacher had done what I suggested, the protest would have finished overnight. But she wouldn't do it. And that's why it has escalated. And that's why I paid the political price, because I said, well, I think the parents have got a valid reason for protesting. Uh, what is your position on uh, uh, support for the Kashmir issue? Look, my position on Kashmir goes back to the time when I was first elected to Parliament. I have consistently supported the right of the Kashmiri people to determine their own future. I oppose totally what Prime Minister Modi did when he revoked uh, the special status of Kashmir. Um, I put down motions in the House of Commons condemning it and I took the matter up with the Foreign Office. And I regret the fact that the Labour Party, which has traditionally supported the Kashmiri people, have in fact changed their policy and they have now adopted a policy which says that the Kashmir issue is a bilateral one between India and Kashmir. I reject that. I reject that entirely. I've always said there has to be international involvement. And although I'm no advocate or lover of the American president, the fact of the matter is when he met Imran Khan, the Prime Minister of Pakistan, he said exactly the same thing. And he was right. The last question is, uh, is this uh, general election about uh, Brexit or Remainer? Brexit is a, 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 a major aspect of the election, but it's not just about Brexit. The Conservatives want to make it into a one-issue election. Uh, the Labour Party quite rightly says, no, there are other uh, issues such as the future of National Health Service, public services and such like, which are equally important. But we are where we are. And the fact of the matter is um, that the general election on the 12th of December is going to either deliver a majority for the Conservatives so that they can then implement Brexit or else a hung parliament and what happens then I honestly don't know but so far as I'm concerned I'm only interested in what's happening in Hall Green at this moment in time and I'm fighting this election very hard indeed to give the people of Hall Green a choice there's only two people who can win in Hall Green myself as the independent Labour candidate or the official Labour candidate because last time I got 42,000 votes and the Conservatives got 8,000. So these scare tactics that the uh, official Labour Party are coming up with because they're worried, make no bones about it, these scare tactics that, oh well, you know, Mr Godsip might split the Labour vote. What arrogance! 
42,000 votes don't belong to the Labour Party. They don't belong to me. They belong to the people of the whole Green constituency, and they should have a choice between two Labour-supporting candidates as to which one they want. So why, why anyone should vote you? They should vote for me because I believe I'm the better of the two candidates. I've served this constituency for 27 years. I fought the issues that my Kashmiri and Muslim communities have wanted me to fight. I have a huge number of people who come to me with individual problems. I don't cheat them. I don't lie to them. I don't take money. I don't give them false impressions. I always do my best to try and help everybody. And I think a lot of people in this constituency were angered by what the Labour Party did when they refused to endorse me because the ruling clique in the Labour Party small, vicious group within the LGBT community and a lot of people I think are angry and I suspect a lot of people say okay come the 12th of December we will decide who we want to represent us not you the Labour Party.